speaking of election results, I have to say 14 of the 15, or was it 13 of the 14 Republicans yesterday won outright in Kentucky by an average of 15 percentage points, in Mississippi by an average of 18 percentage points. But Kellyanne, so uh, yeah, yes. uh, Virginia did not go uh, the president's way. Uh, it looks like the legislature is all Democrat, uh, including the Democratic governor. Does the president look at it as a, as a personal loss that Tom Bevin, as of now, looks like he is going to lose? Uh, Matt Bevin, uh, so it's too close to call. I think they're looking at the voter irregularities in some places. I know that the president first went to Kentucky on August 21st for this race, and Governor Bevin was... Uh, was down nine points, 48 to 39. I checked the poll this morning. I think the president made this race competitive, as did the vice president. And the president got 62.5 percent of the vote in Kentucky three short years ago. He'll dominate the state again next year and put okay. a lot of these races, uh, made them more competitive. But we'll see what happens. Governor Bevin is trailing by point, less than half a percentage right. point. The libertarian there, uh, I guess, was the spoiler. They like to do that everywhere they go. Less than 2 percent of the vote, right. but there's the spoiler. Neither one of uh, 50. And Andy Bashir's father okay. was governor. So all of that is important here. 13 to 14 statewide races. One, and let's see what the final call okay. in the governor's race in Kentucky is. Now, I know Kellyanne Conway's sole job is to spin everything in Trump's favor, but watching her play off the fact that a Republican governor just lost in perhaps the reddest state in the nation is really something else. And she starts off by wheeling off races that Republicans did manage to win in Mississippi and Kentucky. In Mississippi and Kentucky. You know things are moving in the wrong direction when a Republican White House is cheering on the fact that their party didn't lose seats in the most conservative states in the country. It's also worth noting that while she's bragging about taking these seats by an average of 15 percentage points, these are states that Trump won in 2016 by as much as 30 percent. So for the GOP to lose half their leads during the Trump era isn't quite the right trajectory. But when asked point blank whether Trump considers Matt Bevin's loss in Kentucky as a personal loss, the very first thing she does is prop up Bevin's voter irregularities excuse that he's using as justification not to concede the race. Now, of course, it is complete BS. But this is what Republicans do when they lose elections. They stomp their feet and pretend that there was voter fraud. Trump did it when he lost the popular vote in 2016, even going so far as to assemble a voter fraud commission that ultimately disbanded when, surprise, they found no such evidence. Ironically enough, in the last few years, the only instances of fraud that actually occurred did so on behalf of the Republican Party. In North Carolina's 9th District, there was an entire absentee ballot scheme on behalf of then GOP candidate Mark Harris. And just this week, two Republican officials in Ohio were charged with distributing phony sample ballots at the polls. But in terms of the Kentucky race, the only irregularity is that Bevin is so grossly incompetent that he actually managed to lose his race in perhaps the reddest state in the country. But Kellyanne then goes on to actually credit Trump for deigning to come in and even give Matt Bevin a fighting chance. She claims that he was down nine percentage points before the president swooped in and was unilaterally responsible for bringing him to within a half a point. And this line has been adopted by the entire party since all Trump really cares about is feeding his insatiable ego. At 8.37 p.m. after the election, Trump tweeted, Matt Bevin picked up at least 15 points in the last days, but perhaps not enough. At 8.41 p.m., Republican spokeswoman Ron McDaniel Romney wrote on Twitter, in Kentucky, the governor was down 17 points. President Trump helped lift the entire ticket. And at 9.15, Trump again took to Twitter, writing, our big Kentucky rally on Monday night had a massive impact on all of the races. The increase in governor's race was at least 15 points and maybe 20. In other words, in the span of less than an hour, Trump went from a 15 point swing to a 17 point swing to a 20 point swing. By the end of this week, Trump's self-appointed bump will likely reach triple digits. And then, of course, came the excuses. She extols the popularity of Democrat Andy Bashir to diffuse responsibility for the loss off of Trump while simultaneously giving him credit for any semblance of a chance that Bevin did have. Funny how it always seems to work out that way, that Trump always gets all the credit but is never to blame. And then she finishes her rant by complaining about the spoiler, which is weird because I can't quite remember Kellyanne Conway complaining about any spoilers in the 2016 race, like when Jill Stein took 51,000 votes in Michigan where Trump's margin was 10,000, or where she took 49,000 votes in Pennsylvania where Trump's margin was 46,000, or where she took 31,000 votes in Wisconsin where Trump's margin was 22,000. I guess 
Spoilers are only bad when they take away from Republican leads. The fact is, Kellyanne can try to spin what happened in Kentucky as a win for Trump until she's red in the face, but Trump has clearly made the Republican Party toxic, seeding hundreds of seats around the country in what have historically been safe red districts. Trump has presided over major Republican losses now in Kentucky, Virginia, Alabama, Wisconsin, Illinois, Michigan, Maine, Kansas, Nevada, Oklahoma, and New Mexico. He presided over the biggest Democratic takeover of the House in modern American history. He is the only president in modern history not to have a positive approval rating and and now, poll after poll, including those put out by Fox News, shows that the majority of Americans believe he should be impeached. So Trump is absolutely responsible for what happened in Kentucky, and there is no planet on which you can spin that as a win.